I'm Daughter of Darkness. Welcome to the family. Military men and women can witness horrors while fighting wars, but even in peacetime and during basic training, they can have horrific encounters with the paranormal. Those are the stories I'll be presenting here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you'd like to hear more stories like this, click on the end screen at the end of the video or on the link in the pinned comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. While I was in boot camp for the Navy, some strange things happened that I still can't explain. During boot camp, you have to stand watch occasionally for a few hours. I was put on night watch. My partner and I did the midnight to 2 a.m. shift. My job was roving security, so I patrolled the area, took temperature readings, and was on the lookout for suspicious activity. We had to practice temperature readings because apparently it's very important on a warship. Normally, the most serious thing I dealt with was telling the other recruits to stop loitering in the bathroom and get back to bed. But one night, around 2 a.m., I was making my rounds and I thought I heard someone talking in the bathroom. I went inside and heard whispering coming from the showers, so I walked towards them. And what I saw was just weird. I saw a young man around 20 years old, hunched over and facing the wall, I walked towards him saying, Hey man, you need to get back to your bunk. But as I approached him, he vanished into thin air. When I walked out of the bathroom, the other guy on watch asked me why I was so pale. I told him what happened, but he said it was likely just the result of stress and lack of sleep. I agreed with them because who would want to haunt a shower, especially at boot camp of all places? But the next night, another recruit on watch reported seeing the same shadows in the shower and hearing those whispers. I told him what I had seen, and I told him that it was likely our minds playing tricks on us because we were tired. He agreed, and we decided that we should just ignore it. So we did. That is, until I started seeing things outside of the showers, too. One night I was patrolling in the sick bay. As I walked past some empty bunks, I saw a movement out of the corner of my eye. I figured it was some of the recruits messing around, so I told them to go back to bed. But as I approached, I saw some kind of shadow figure that didn't look human to me. It was like a black blob moving around, and when I went to investigate, it vanished. That area was extremely cold compared to the rest of the room. But I told myself that the staff must have cranked up the air conditioning, or I was just imagining things. But I had these same experiences all through my time at boot camp, especially on night watch. One night I was told to take the temperatures throughout the entire building. My job was to go to each division and ask the room temperature. I was almost done except for the last two. As I went past an empty room, I swore I saw some movement inside. The room was just being used for storage and was pitch black except for the ambient light from the hallway. All I could see inside were some boxes. But then, I saw what looked like a person standing just beyond the light, facing me. I decided to ignore it. There was something about the whole setup that scared me, yet I still thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. However, as I was leaving the area to turn in my report, I noticed a shadowy arm reaching out from that very doorway, but as I approached, it disappeared and the area was very cold, like a 20 degree difference between the rest of the hallway. You may think I'm lying or seeking attention, but I'm just trying to find out what this was. And here are some replies from the comment section. I've heard similar stories while at basic training. We actually had a guy found naked in the showers one night talking to himself, facing the corner wall. It was kind of how you described it, but it was a real person, and he was sent home for wanting to kill himself. This was at Fort Jackson in 2017. We've heard multiple stories of people committing suicide specifically in the showers, so I believe you 
and I think people who died there haunt the place. A lot of recruits died during basic training. When I was in, we lost three of them. One dropped dead during a two-mile run, one hit a round of ammunition in his underwear from the firing range and blew his head off in the latrine, and one jumped head first out of a third-story window. Bases are really haunted. There's a lot of trauma and negative energy. I'll never forget seeing the blood of that kid that jumped to his death. He wasn't even in basic training yet. We were still sitting around for two weeks filling out paperwork and getting all of our physicals done. But he decided he'd made a mistake by joining and took his own life to get out of it. Some of the drill sergeants woke us up and made us walk past the body. They gave us all a big speech about if we were going to kill ourselves, make sure we actually finished the job. Because if we lived, that just made more paperwork for them. So yeah, bases are haunted. The first fatalities that I witnessed were during basic training. I walked outside to see a group of people gathering around the barracks. They were jeering at a recruit that climbed on top of the roof. Have you ever seen the movie Full Metal Jacket? Private Pile during the first half of the movie is a prime example of how your own training platoon can turn on you. Apparently this guy was always messing up and the entire platoon was being punished for his transgressions. So with everyone against him, he decided to take his own life. The guy was standing on the edge of the roof looking down, and his entire platoon was yelling for him to jump. And he did, just as I walked out and stopped to see what was going on. He was lined up with the basement stairwell, so when he jumped from the roof, he fell out of sight down the stairwell. The sound of his body hitting the concrete was gruesome. After it happened, the rumor was that guys on watch would hear crying at night in the stairwell and on the roof. If you're talking about Camp Lejeune, I believe you, because I was stationed there for four years and I experienced a few things there myself. The one I remember the most was being in our armored vehicle in the field at night. I was trying to sleep in the back when I got this overwhelming sense of dread coming from the rear hatch. It was like something wanted me to open up the rear door. I have no idea why, but I felt that there was something evil on the other side of that door, and it scared me. There was no noise, no sound whatsoever. Just a sense of, it was game over if I opened that hatch. Mind you, I was in the prime of my life at the time, a big badass marine who should have been fearless, but I wasn't. A friend of mine was stationed at Camp Lejeune about 30 years ago, and he had an experience very similar to yours. They were in their Bradley tanks overnight during an exercise. He woke up around three in the morning and he heard something faintly scratching at the rear hatch. He had a feeling of overwhelming dread. After a while, the scratching stopped, and the feeling of dread went away. None of the other guys noticed anything, and they didn't even wake up. But the next morning, they all said that they had really freaky dreams that night. My advice? Don't try to find out what it was. Don't ask about it. Don't talk about it. Don't engage. An entity that's able to make itself seen under the circumstances you described is not good. However, you do not need to be afraid. Fear is a choice with these things. They're counting on your fear. They feed off of it, and it tethers you to them. The minute you feel a temperature drop or see something strange, Say to yourself, I'm safe, and anything that's here is not invited, and it's not welcome, and it has to leave now. If you can say it out loud, do so with the clearest, firmest voice you can. Project authority and show it who's boss. You've got this thing.
When I was in Navy boot camp, there was a memorial bunk on one end of the room for a sailor that had died of lung disease. No one was allowed within two feet of it. But at night, there was always this black shadow that would move around in front of it. I couldn't stand it in there. In 2006, I was stationed in Okinawa. They had just built a new headquarters and were planning to move in a few days. I was the duty clerk in that old building for the final week. My desk was facing the couch in the entryway. Then, to both the right and left, were hallways. I could lean back in my chair and see the entire length of the building down either hallway. Around 2300, I heard footsteps coming from the hallway to my left. I leaned back but saw nothing. Then, I heard footsteps to my right. I kept hearing the same footsteps, first on one side of my desk, then the other. But no one was there. I started to get scared, so I stepped outside to have a cigarette and calmed down. While I was out there smoking, the guards came by to do their rounds. I mentioned the footsteps to them, and they did an entire check of the building to make sure it was secure. But everything seemed fine. They said jokingly, The place must be haunted, so if you hear any more footsteps, ask the ghost to keep you company. Maybe he's bored too. About ten minutes after they left, I did hear the footsteps again. So I said, Come on over here and hang out a bit. I'm bored out of my mind. And I kid you not, the footsteps went right over to the couch, stopped, and then an indentation appeared in the cushion like someone had just sat down. Thinking I'd make the best of a weird situation, I said, Well, thank you, and how are you on this beautiful night? There was no response, but after 30 minutes, the indentation disappeared, and I didn't hear the footsteps again that night. The next day they began moving to the new building, which has its own stories. Most notably, hearing voices on the intercom, when I was completely alone in the building. The worst was the night I heard someone yell, I need help in here! He's dying! Coming from the intercom. The system didn't tell us which office the transmissions came from, so if anyone needed something, they had to identify who they were and where they were located. But the voice hadn't done that. So I ran through the entire building, checking every office on every floor but there was no one in the building. I was completely alone. Back in 2012, I was lucky enough to be a private in the army in Afghanistan. I won't bore you with the details, but I worked with the radio team in a pretty remote area of a combat outpost. One night, we got a very weird transmission. It came in pretty strong, but we couldn't determine from what direction it was coming. However, what made it truly odd was what was being said. Now, I'm no linguist, but I know enough about the different languages to know that this was nothing other than straight-up Russian. That sent up red flags. We started making phone calls to the operations center and waking people up. We had a recording device and were able to capture most of the broadcast before it stopped completely. We didn't have anyone who spoke Russian with us, so we had no idea what was going on. But one of the people in our unit knew Russian from back in the Cold War days, so we had him give a listen. His language skills were rusty, but he got the general idea of the message. He said it was a distress call asking for help, that their base had been overrun and they were under attack. This was even more confusing as there hadn't been a Russian base in Afghanistan since the occupation, and that was years before. We all sat around and brainstormed trying to figure out what could have caused that transmission. He said that maybe it was a pre-recorded beacon that had just been randomly set off after all these years. The only thing that bothers me with that explanation was that the whole thing did not sound pre-recorded. There was an obvious level of distress in their voices. Maybe we tapped into some event from long ago. I 
I'm in the Coast Guard. There was a building in front of our barracks that people said was haunted by our old master chief of the station. He hung himself after finding his wife cheating on him with a non-rate. Supposedly, he shot the non-rate dead and then hung himself. So we all thought this building was haunted. Lights would come on by themselves at night, things would be moved around on their own, and the front door was found open several times when no one had been there. But it turned out that some of the local homeless population were squatting in the building, so it wasn't haunted. However, there was another building adjacent to that, and it was haunted. My friend lived there, and I would go over all the time to hang out with her or babysit her kids. One night, I was babysitting, and I heard footsteps over my head, and there were always cold spots throughout the apartment. It turns out that the Master Chief story was just a legend, but there really was a guy who blew his head off in my friend's bedroom. Our barracks was haunted, too. I woke up several times to find my blanket on the other side of the room, and there was a feeling of always being watched. I'm really glad that I was finally reassigned. I work on a submarine, and there are few things as unnerving as wandering around the engine room alone on night watch. When the boat is shut down in port, it becomes a very quiet place. The roving watches try to speed through their rounds, especially on the lower levels of the submarine. One time the boat was moored in Pearl Harbor, and people started to complain about having an uneasy feeling. I was on watch at night, and the senior chief came down to do his required O300 tour. We saw him walk past on his way to Shaft Alley. What we didn't expect was for him to literally run out of the area a few minutes later. The man was pale-faced and breathing heavily. We sat up straight at alert, thinking he was about to announce something really bad. He collapsed into a chair, and a few tense minutes went by as he was silent for a while. We were all on pins and needles, until he finally opened his mouth and told us about the ghost in Shaft Alley. He swore that a sailor passed him by while he was sitting there. His first response was to call out to the guy to see who it was, but then he realized that the guy wasn't dressed right. He said the guy was in an old World War II naval uniform, so he got up and ran after him. The guy turned towards him, looked him right in the eye, and then turned away and literally walked through the wall. The senior chief swore up and down that he knew what he saw, and I sure wasn't going to go there and find out for myself, so I just took his word for it. I'm currently stationed on an aircraft carrier commissioned back in 1977. There's never any lack of creepiness on that thing. I work security there at night, and one night my buddy was coming up from five decks below up to the flight deck. He got to a part of the boat that was almost pitch black, and he started hearing footsteps behind him. He looked around, but there was no one there. So he picked up the pace and started running. And as he did, the footsteps started up again, running after him. He turned around to look again, and this time, he saw a dark figure about 30 feet behind him. He started running as fast as he could, and the footsteps and that shadow ran after him. When he arrived on the flight deck, he was pale and terrified. He told us what happened, so we do our best to avoid that area at night. There's another ghost on the ship, too. He shows up if you're on night watch and you start dozing off. He's dressed in the uniform, and he'll come up to you, tap you on the shoulder, and say, Don't report this. Then, he jumps into the water. On that ship, there's always a constant feeling of being watched when you're alone. People in the military have enough on their plate without having to deal with the paranormal, so ghosts really should leave them alone. But they won't. They're pretty self-centered. I'd like to thank you all for listening tonight. And don't forget to click on the end screen to hear more stories like this, so you can stay scared until we meet again.
my friends.